Good Sunday evening, everybody, from the News Channel 3 Severe Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the latest edition, Sunday night edition, of News Channel 3's video weather blog and astronomy blog. It's called Skyblog 3, giving you an update as to what's going on in the Mid-South where it comes to astronomy purposes, all available at wreg.com slash weather. And always remember to keep looking up. Great opportunity to introduce your kids to the science of astronomy and some opportunities with some local events coming up with yours truly. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little while. Tonight's viewing, not doing too bad. Visibility is going to be okay. We're not going to be seeing too much of any other major problems with visibility throughout the course of the rest of the evening. It's going to be a little bit more on the humid side the farther we go into tomorrow morning. And by the time we hit early tomorrow morning, could be again a few clouds drifting on through with a new front and some possible fog forming and higher humidity levels could be a bit of a problem there. Brightest choices tonight, Venus and Saturn will be around a conjunction. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Mars also will be in Saturn. Sagittarius in the southern skies. Perseus rising, a very nice constellation to try to catch if you're an amateur astronomer. That'll be rising in the northeast throughout the rest of the month and into early November. An iridium flare will be taking place into tomorrow morning. Northern skies, north-northeasterly skies, about 622 in the morning. Again, that'll be tomorrow morning, Halloween Monday, right about an hour before sunrise. So you should be able to see this pretty easily in the northern skies between roughly about the peak of the sky and looking downwards. It'll be going toward the horizon. Again, that'll be at about 622 tomorrow morning if you'd like to get a chance to try and see that. We do have a bit of a nice sky show going on. Got a bit of a conjunction taking place with Venus, the brightest of the planets at this time, in the direction of sunset, 20 to 30 minutes after sundown. Look for the planet Saturn to join up with Venus in the darkening sky. Just below that, according to EarthSky.org, you'll also be able to see the star Antares that'll be very close to the horizon 70 minutes after about sunset and through about the time that it goes beneath the southwestern horizon. Venus will be the brighter of the two points. Saturn will be just above and about 1 to 2 o'clock in that particular area, and a good opportunity to be able to see that at this point in time. And again, Antares, the bright star, will be seen just right beneath that down toward the horizon. More information available at earthsky.org if you'd like to see that. Beyond that, there's really not that much going on for tonight. No major amounts of satellite flyovers. Tiangong-1, the Chinese space station, is going to be flying overhead, but it's going to be very dim, so doubtful we're going to be able to actually see that, unfortunately. I'd like to know more about astronomy. The Memphis Astronomical Society is a great place to go to. And a good opportunity to learn more about that will be at Christian Brothers University at their monthly meeting. That'll be this Friday, 8 p.m. at a CC Science Hall. That'll be held on Central Avenue into around the Midtown area, just north of the Liberty Bowl and just along East Parkway. So if you'd like to hear that, the lectures taking place there will be me talking about weather types of websites around the Mid-South and beyond that you may not have thought of before when it comes to looking up information or radar. Very important to know about whether if you're an astronomer to see what's going on out across parts of the Mid-South. And if you'd like to see more about the hidden aspects of weather knowledge out there where it comes to forecasting and keeping track of the weather on websites that you may not have thought of before, I'll have more on that. Plus, Rebecca Love will have more about light pollution in the Mid-South area and getting the dark skies back so we can all do some more stargazing, whether we're in the city or out of it. There's too much light as it is, and we could use a little bit less of that to make certain that everybody is able to see the stars out there and make certain that we have a good opportunity to learn more. More information at Memphis Astronomical Society's website, memphisastro.org, also on Facebook, and also we'll post the information at wreg.com slash weather, so you can have more information about that. Again, that'll be going on throughout the rest of Friday evening. That'll be Friday at 8 o'clock, Christian Brothers University on Central Avenue in Memphis, and I'll be there again as part of that lecture. We'll have more information about the forecast coming up tonight on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10, the Halloween forecast as well, and we're going toward Election Day, so we're going to take a look and see how the weather's going to be doing for Election Day for getting out and casting your ballot. We'll also have more information on the astronomy blog throughout the rest of the week to help you know a little bit more about what's coming up in the skies over the Mid-South. Science rules, and remember to keep looking up whenever you have a chance to go out and take a look at the stars. You should always take advantage of it and try to get your kids interested in something like that as well. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the latest edition of Skyblog 3, News Channel 3's video astronomy blog from the News Channel 3 Weather Center. Stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online.